Well, Satoshi Nakamoto, a college student, when he or she made Bitcoin, is Facebook actually going ahead with their own coin? And is IBM leading the way in the blockchain space? Let's start the show. Welcome back to Crypto Global News. Please make sure you hit the subscribe and also notifications buttons so you don't miss an episode. I'm Edward and we're going to be bringing you the news from the world of cryptocurrency now three times a week on Sundays, Tuesdays and also Thursdays. If you're in Los Angeles, each episode will be live at 2 p.m. your time. If you're in New York, it'll be a 5 p.m. start time for you. And if you're across the pond in London, it'll be a 10 p.m. launch time for the episode. Enjoy today's show. The concept of a young genius solving a decades-old problem while skipping maths and computer science classes is fascinating, but is it reality? We won't know for sure until he or she actually comes out and the story is completely uncovered, but that's the claim of a series of people doing some analysis on what looks at the times and dates of activity by Satoshi Nakamoto. The analysis begins by looking at the white paper's timestamp metadata, specifically the early draft Bitcoin white paper published in October of 2008 and the one published in March of 2009. Now, looking at when Satoshi Nakamoto was actually active, the conclusion is that this is the behavior of a university student. The analysis says the thing that catches our eye is the above graphs in this Satoshi spent little or no time on Bitcoin-related activity in the months of March, April, and May, and then entered into a sustained burst of activity during the summer of 2010, including pulling quite a few all-nighters. This may just be a bunch of people who are desperate to try to keep the discussion about Satoshi Nakamoto alive. Let's see if this person or persons comes to center stage in the near future. Dubai's first Bitcoin ATM installed earlier in March of 2019 was just removed a few days after it was actually launched. This is due to a lack of AML and KYC obligations for the purchasing of Bitcoin and users could purchase Bitcoin with cash while staying completely anonymous, no questions asked. The ATM was installed in the Riox Premium, a luxury hotel and wellness center in Dubai's Jermaine Beach residence. The users were not required to provide any form of identification. All they needed was a Bitcoin receiving address and cash with which to make a purchase. The ATM did not offer a function for users to sell Bitcoin, although that was meant to come in the future. Unfortunately, such easy access to the Bitcoin market was not to be. The removal of Dubai's first Bitcoin ATM ruins a nice streak of bullish developments happening in the UAE. Maybe the United Arab Emirates is not quite ready to embrace what crypto is all about. Facebook is making big strides in the blockchain industry with new hires as they prepare to launch their US dollar-backed stablecoin, which will purportedly launch in the first half of 2019. Now, according to Facebook's Career Center, where the company posts job openings and upcoming positions, a job description detailing the need for a senior lawyer with experience in both blockchain and payments was recently posted. Facebook is said to be developing a stablecoin cryptocurrency that will enable users to transfer money across the social media giant's popular messaging app, WhatsApp. WhatsApp. It is rumored that Facebook will eventually integrate their cryptocurrency across all of their social media platforms. Let's see what effect this coin has on the crypto market and the greater economy once it's released. Duke University is teaming up with blockchain startup Citizens Reserve on an educational initiative aimed to develop students' interest in blockchain technology. Citizens Reserve, a team of former Deloitte blockchain employees, advised that it will jointly create a new incubation lab on Duke's campus for students to work on real blockchain projects and host blockchain-focused events. The company will also support the university in putting together a curriculum on blockchain technology, as well as connecting students with blockchain experts and helping them find jobs in the sector once they graduated from Duke University. With the study of blockchain growing at many top schools, how will this affect the future of blockchain and technology more generally? IBM's Jesse Lund, who heads the blockchain division and claims IBM is the leader in blockchain technology, in a recent interview, Lund had this to say, what IBM has been doing as the leader in blockchain technology for the last three years is adding security and confidence to the system. Now, Lund talks about IBM's cross-border payment solution, which in part uses Stellar Looms for settlement, and how one of the oldest technology companies in the world plans to revolutionize the remittance market. The solutions developed are challenging Ripple's X-Rapid product for adoption, 
but all the products will have to work together to create a global and harmonious system. If IBM is actually leading the way in the blockchain space, then the debate about decentralization is all over. Many thanks for tuning in to today's episode. If you have any thoughts, questions, or comments on this particular video or cryptocurrency more generally, just drop us a line in the comments below. For Crypto Global News, I'm Edward. Until next time, you take it easy.